Float32, Float16, Bflot16. So why does that matter for deep learning? Those are just different levels of precision. Float32 is a way to represent a floating point number with 32 bits, one or zeros. And Float16 or Bflot16 is a way to represent the same number with just 16 bits. So this is quite important for deep learning because in the backpropagation algorithm, the model parameters are updated by a gradient descent optimizer and the computations are done with Float32 precision to make sure that there are less rounding errors. The model parameters and the gradients are usually stored in memory in Float16 to reduce the pressure on the memory. So we need to convert back and forth between Float16 and Float32. So let me explain how those data types were constructed. Let's get into it. So let's try to understand a bit better what are those different data types. So here is a float32. A float32 is a data type where we are trying to represent a floating point number using 32 bits. So here we have 32 bits, so one or zeros, and we have a floating point number that is represented with those 32 bits. We use the first digit to represent the sign. We use the next eight bits to represent the exponent. I'm going to explain in a minute how we set up the exponent. And the next 23 bits are used for the decimal points. We also call the decimal point the mantissa. So to convert to a floating point number, we use this formula. So we have minus one to the power sine. So if sine is equal to one, minus one to the power one is equal to minus one. If sine is equal to zero, minus one to the power zero is equal to one. So this will decide the sign. So these eight bits represent an integer and I can convert those eight bits into an integer number. I subtract 127 to make sure that I can go from big numbers to small numbers and I take the power two of those. The mantissa represents the decimal point. So I just convert those 23 bits into integer and I can represent all the decimal points by using this implicit one and all the mantissa number are used after the decimal point. So let's look at an example. So here I have one. If I convert one to a decimal number, it's one. If I look at those bits here and I convert to a decimal number, it's 81. If I look at those bits here and I convert to a decimal number, I will get this number. And I just append a one with the decimal point and this will represent the decimal points. So I just take those numbers and I plug them into the formula. So one into the exponent of minus one, they give me minus one. 81 into the exponent of two, I subtract 127 from it and I take the power of two and I multiply by this number here. And the final number is minus 1.9, 10 to the minus 14. So this is a way you convert an array of zero and ones into a floating point number by using this float32 data type. So let's look at float16. So float16, we give the first digit for the sign, the five next digits for the exponent, and the next 10 bits for the mantissa. The formula is a bit different because we are subtracting the exponent by 15 instead of 127. Now let's look at brain float16. With brain for 16, I also want to represent a floating point number with 16 bits, but instead of allocating five bits to the exponent, we allocate eight bits to the exponent. So this is very similar to the float32. In float32, we allocate eight bits to the exponent. Of course, we need to allocate less bits for the mantissa. So here we allocate seven bits for the mantissa. So this data type, brain float16 or bfloat16, has less precision because I cannot represent as much decimals with that mantissa, but has the same range that float32. In comparison, float16 does not have the same range, but is more precise. The formula for brain float16 is the same as the one we use for float32. It makes sense because we have the same number of bits allocated to the exponent. We can look also at float8. In float8, we allocate the first digit to be sine, the next four bits to be the exponent and the next three bits to be the mantissa. The formula is a bit different because we have less bits allocated to the exponent and we subtract by seven in this case. So it is very important to understand that the range for float32 goes from minus 3.4, 10 to the 38 
to 3.4, 10 to the 38, where float 16 goes from minus 6.65, 10 to the power 4, to 6.55 times 10 to the power 4. So the range between float 16 and float 32 is very different. So it can be sometimes very hard to convert a float 32 number into a float 16 number because of the possible float overflow errors. On the other hand, bfloat16 has almost the same range than float32. So it is actually very easy to convert from float32 to bfloat16. And you can see that the range of float8 is much smaller. It goes from minus 240 to 240. So let's see how we can convert a float32 to another data type. So let's say we want to convert to float16. Well, the way we do it, we just need to remove some of the bits. So the exponent is somewhat different because we subtract by 127 for the float32 and by 15 for the float16. So there's some conversions that needs to happen. So it's not as simple as getting rid of the first three digits. But I just wanted to give you a sense on how easy it is to convert from float32 to float16. For the mantissa, it is very much the same. I just removed the last digits uh, that are allocated for the mantissa. And this will basically round down the mantissa. So the mantissa will produce some rounding errors, but it is very likely that if the number that is represented in float32 is larger than the maximum number that can be allocated to float16, it is very likely that we get a float overflow error. So when you convert from float32 to float16, you need to be very careful about what is the value of the number that is represented in float32. So now let's see how we're going to convert a float32 to a bfloat16. Converting a float32 to a bfloat16 is trivial because we just need to run down the mantissa and we don't need to take care of the rest because the number of bits allocated to the exponent is exactly the same. So converting from float32 to bfloat16 is completely trivial. We're just going to get some rounding errors. So in the context of the backpropagation algorithm, when we need to move from float16 precision to float32 precision to update the model parameters by using the gradient descent update, it is actually better to use the bfloat16 precision such that we can move easily from float32 to bfloat16 back and forth.